All right, guys, y'all welcome back again to the second part. So at this point, we'll be introducing in Nicholas, Nicholas Zubi. Nicholas Zubi is as a resource personnel in the Microsoft space, and he works currently works with one of the top IT companies in the country, Ghana, IPMC. So he will be um, taking us through licenses and server licenses. Nicholas, can you hear? Can you hear me? Hello. Yeah, I can hear you. All right, sure. So um, the floor is yours. Yeah, OK, thank you. Um, good morning, everybody. Um, I can share my screen now, right? Yes, you can. Is it possible to turn on your camera as well? Sure. Um, All right. Just give me a sec. Okay. All right. Mm. Yeah, we can see you now. You can see me now. Okay, yeah. great. Um, okay. Um, share my screen. Um, can you see my screen now? Not yet. Okay, just a second. Can't see your screen. It will be up shortly. Yeah. Yes. Right. Okay, it's visible now. Okay. Um. Is it visible? Yes, yes, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yes, we, we can see your screen now. Okay. All right. So, um, good morning, everybody. My name is Nicholas Zubi. Um, I'm a cloud and licensing specialist. Uh, I've actually worked in the Microsoft space for quite a while now. Um, as you can see, these are the small certifications I've been able to acquire for myself. I actually did most of them last year because uh, previously now most of them had expired and I used the lockdown opportunity to grab a couple of them. Um, I'm a Microsoft certified trainer, even though I don't I don't train anymore lately, but uh, it's still good to, you know, have this kind of opportunities and, you know, share what you know and uh, what you've been able to acquire over the years with a lot of people. It's actually a pleasure joining you people today. So um, today itself, uh, we'll be talking about Microsoft licensing. Um, with the Microsoft licensing, uh, when I actually came into the Microsoft space, that was one of my difficulties, you know, and anybody can testify that the licensing is not that easy. You know, it cuts across regardless of the product, whether Oracle, whether Cisco, whether VMware. But, you know, Microsoft is one of the major products that takes their licensing very seriously. Um, I've come across a couple of scenarios where sometimes the licensing doesn't make sense and you may think microsoft is wrong or something of that sort but the truth is licensing is like a rule if 
if you don't play by the rules, you get it wrong. And it wasn't something I acquired in a day or two. It takes time and experience. Uh, over time, you meet certain challenges or you meet certain scenarios that actually improves upon your licensing understanding. Um, let's dig right into it. Um, I don't want us to spend a lot of time on this. And as we are going, if you have any question, you can actually raise your hand and then I will answer it before we move on. But then I'll be glad if um, we don't take a lot of questions in between or else we will miss out on what we are trying to do. So if in the course of the presentation, um, you have any question, maybe about one or two questions, I can take it, I'll answer you, and then we can move on from there. And this is my Twitter account, eBlueByte, and then that's my blog. I haven't updated in a while, but then um, I know as time goes on, I'll, I'll make some small time and you know post content on there. So you can check it out from time to time and then we'll see how it goes. So um, let's let's go straight to um, the licensing. We will actually be talking about licensing for the server operating systems. And I want us to talk about the two major ones, which is the SQL licensing and then the Windows Server licensing. Um, can you see my next slide? Not, not yet. Not yet. Okay. Um, let's see. So which, which screen is displaying now? Learn the proper way of licensing Microsoft Server, right? Yes, yes. Okay, great. So um, as I was saying, um, we'll be talking about the two major ones, which is the Windows Server and the SQL Server. Actually, if if you want to get into licensing or if, if you're already in it, you know that these are the two major products that you always encounter problems with, and they are the ones that keeps coming. So we'll take these two and then probably maybe some other time we can look at the other ones like the exchange and the the other you know Microsoft server products. But these are actually the major ones that most of the time it comes with complications and issues. So um, these are the two we're talking about, Windows Server and then SQL Server. One more ask, what is, what is Microsoft licensing? So in a nutshell, Microsoft licensing is the proper way of purchasing and using Microsoft services and solutions. Um, for every Microsoft product, you have to purchase a license for it. So if you know you are using any Microsoft solution or service which you didn't pay for or you didn't actually get it for free from Microsoft, then um, you are actually breaking a rule, which is which you can be arrested for that. But you know, this part of our region, you know, some of these things don't really work out. But it's an offense to actually use products and services Hello? that are not your IP as in your property. Uh, how are you doing? Why are you outside the country? That is not your intellectual property and you you, you can be arrested for that, as I said. Um, uh -huh. So um, when it comes to Microsoft licensing, okay, we have about six modules of the licensing. We have the CSP, which is the cloud solution provider. We have the FPP, which is the fully packaged product. And we have the OEM, which is the original equipment manufacturer license. And okay, I think I, I brought CSP again. 
we have enterprise agreement and we have volume licensing. So when we talk about the CSP, CSP is actually the licensing that Microsoft is aggressively pushing now. So with the CSP, you pay annually. And now almost every product is on the CSP where you are able to purchase a server license, you're able to purchase your Office 365, you're able to purchase um, your any of the Microsoft products and services, but then you pay either monthly or you pay annually. That's the CSP. And when it comes to the FPP, which is the fully packaged product, um, it come together as a bundle package. So you get the software in a form of a CD, sorry, or a pen drive. Then it comes with the product activation key. And with that, you don't have an electronic copy of it. You only get a physical copy of it and you are able to use as and when you want. But then when you uh, you misplace the license, the, the, there is low probability of actually getting it back because it's, it's a physical uh, product. Um, when we come to the OEM, it mostly comes with uh, laptop vendors. So um, if you buy a laptop, you actually buy, especially those ones that come with uh, the operating systems. It's a license they've actually acquired from Microsoft and then they add it to the server or the Windows, uh, how do you call it, the laptop, and then you've paid for the whole thing together as a package. And then we have the enterprise agreement. So, sorry, so uh, most of the laptops that are around, you know when you purchase it, it already comes with Windows 10 on it. And then, you know, you can just start using it without having to purchase a license. Mostly, if you set it up, it automatically activates itself. Let's come to the enterprise agreement. Um, with the enterprise agreement, it's an agreement you actually sign with Microsoft. So the product and services that you want, you go into an agreement with them and then you pay yearly or uh, three years. And then you can get to use the products and services. And these products and services are actually um, a couple of products bundled together. And um, I know one day we'll dig deeper into enterprise agreement itself um, because it's also a topic on its own. And then the volume license, which we all know, which is, I mean, one of the product, uh, one of the licensing schemes that, um, um, I mean, most of us are accustomed to because the volume license have actually stayed for quite a while now. And that is what we'll be talking about with the server licenses. So um, when we say server licensing, in uh, the server 2008, 2008 R2 um, and below actually had their way of licensing. And that is based on the number of sockets. So um, let me move to that slide. So when you take the server 2008 and below, um, you license the server based on the number of sockets. And when I say socket, um, you know, every computer comes with a processor. And when you take the processor, um, those who have opened your laptop before or a desktop before, you see that uh, box thing, you know, that we identify as the processor. That is the socket. So the processor socket has what? The, the, the processing what calls in it. And back in the days, that's how Microsoft used to, you know, license their service. So you license it based on the number of sockets. And when you take the Microsoft server, for example, um, we have 
the as in the 2008 we have the web server we had the standard we had the enterprise and we had the data center so this is what most people are actually used to and if you look at the slide this is how it's being licensed so for the web server it's based on the physical i mean physical what processor as in the processor socket and it's only based on one processor socket or one what virtual what processor and when you come to the server 2008 r2 standard is licensed based on what one processor socket plus one virtual what operating system environment so the pos posc actually means um physical operating environment and then the vos actually means um, virtual operating system uh, operating system environment so you purchase a license for the physical machine itself which is the server and then you purchase a license for the virtual machine that you want to run on it as well and those of you who have deployed some of these things you know that uh, for every server you can run a couple of virtualization on, on it so even with your windows 10 you can actually set up a hyper v on it by something you have to activate it, it hasn't come out of the box but for the server you can actually run um, instances of virtual machines on, on on a server operating system so that is the meaning of the one POSC and the plus the one VOSC and when you come to the enterprise edition um, it's licensed based on what one processor core plus uh, four virtual what operating system environment and then when you come to the data center to one processor but then you have unlimited number of what virtual operating system environment on it and there are so many instances where um, if someone is buying a server those of you who have sold the server licenses before um, most of the time when you are quoting you end up quoting what the server and then you add user cows to it with win uh, with windows server 2008 2008 r2 and um, 2012 um, we're not adding server cows to it so for the cows which is the remote desktop car uh, windows user car and then um, terminal cows we were not adding it to it so as you can see on the slide no cows required so you just quote and you just send the server um cost to whoever will be requesting for it and this is what most people as in people who have been in the industry for quite long actually are used uh, to I, it I, I, Nicholas, uh, sorry, yeah. but you, uh, we can't see your uh, slide oh really yes it's just the first page that it's showing oh sorry um let me see where the issue is coming from okay we can now see you can see it now yes okay so um so this is basically what i was actually talking about Let, let's stay here for quite some time and then uh we we'll move on to the next slide okay so let's continue um if we say a cow what is a cow to microsoft so a cow is actually client access license that uh, you purchase for a lot of products from microsoft so when you buy a server operating system you have to buy a car when you buy um, an sql server um, you have to buy a car but it's not all of them if you buy an exchange server you have to buy a car in addition to it um let's leave what um uh, is in the past let's leave what what's past to the past 
um, I wanted to dig deeper into the previous licenses, which is the licensing around the 2008 and then 2008 R2 and below. But um, since we are moving forward, let's actually talk to a new licensing scheme that is causing a lot of problems for customers and then partners from time to time. So as I said, with a client access license, we have the user car license, and then we have the device car, and then we have the RDS car or the remote desktop section car. One will ask that, okay, if I buy a server operating system, and this is actually for the server operating system, as in server 2012, server 2016, server 2019, Windows Server Operating System itself. So um, when you buy the server operating system, you have to buy a car in addition, which is either a user car or a device car. So with the user car, we quote the user car when the number of users who will be in the Active Directory are going to be universal. So uh, for most companies, you join and then they create your username in the Active Directory. All this is done with a user car. But for the device car, you create something like a template user. So user one, user two, user three. And when that uh, user is used to log into a system, that's what is being used. So you don't come and you log in with maybe your name, Nicholas, but rather you've been given a user ID, like maybe test one, test two, or dex one, dex two, or front dex. And we use that license, uh, we use the device car license for that kind of um, um, user creation because the license is actually attached to the device, not to the user. So anybody at all can come and log in without having to have a license to him or herself because the, the, the number of users or the accounts that are being created in the Active Directory are actually based on the device, not the users itself. And then we have remote desktop car license or terminal license. With this licensing, okay, this is an extra license that you buy in addition to a user car or a device car, okay? So um, with remote desktop car, you, you purchase it if you have remote desktop users. So actually, when you purchase your server license fresh, you actually get a free trial for, I think, 90 days. So with the 90 days, you can create a couple of remote desktop users, and they can access the remote desktop of the server anywhere, anytime, without having to pay for it. But after the 90 days, you actually have to buy license for each user who will be using um, um, or will be connecting to the server remotely. Are we okay? All right. And if you are setting up an environment that will require a remote desktop access, you actually need to buy the remote desktop car as well. So most of the time with these things, most customers are not aware. So what we do is we try to ask them, okay, will users be accessing the server remotely and even if they are accessing the server remotely is it going to be through a jump box or is it going to be through an application or they are going to access the server remotely by themselves all this will contribute to the number of remote desktop licenses that we add to the server but then for user car or device car is mandatory as long as you are buying a server 2016 or a server 2019, you are supposed to buy either of this. And the minimum is actually five. The reason why the minimum is actually five is that um, when it comes to Microsoft volume licensing, okay, which we are talking about right now, um, if you have not purchased any Microsoft licenses, okay, 
you don't have the right to use a volume license. But then if you want to join the volume license or you want to you know, subscribe to volume licensing, you have to purchase licenses from the volume licensing, a minimum of five. So if you are buying Windows 10, you have to buy a minimum of five Windows 10 for you to be eligible to be um, um, to use the volume licenses, okay? And when you purchase stuff like that, Microsoft actually gives you what we call license agreement number, a LAN. It's a number that uh, Microsoft attaches to your company. And in case you are buying more license, more volume license in the future, you can actually, you know, share that license agreement number with your partner or um, with, with a company you are trying to purchase the license from. And then they can quote for one, two, three, or four, or less than five for you because you already have an agreement, which is a volume license agreement with Microsoft. But if this is your first time you are buying a license, then you have to buy the server, which we all know is quite expensive. So we can ask you to buy five servers, especially if you don't need, if you don't have a need for that. So when you buy the server one, then you buy five user cards in addition to it. And then make this clear. Um, it's not like you can't buy, um, someone will ask, okay, but you said five, uh, a minimum of five. So then why can't I buy one server license and then buy four user cards? This is very doable, okay? You can buy one server and then buy four user cards and you qualify to be, to, to use the Microsoft volume license, okay? But uh, most of us have used the one server five user cards for quite some time. But if you buy one server and four user cards, you still can, you know, purchase it and still, you know, use your server license without any problem. Is that okay? So let's move on to the next slide, um, which is the shift to the core base license. As I mentioned earlier, um, Previously, Microsoft was licensing its server software based on the number of processing sockets. But currently, what Microsoft is doing is they are licensing their servers based on the number of cores. So as I said earlier, if you take a computer or a server, we have the processor socket, okay? And in the processor socket, we have what? The number of cores, okay? So those are the cores we are talking about. Some have four cores, some have eight cores, some have 16 cores, some have 32, some have 64 and above. You get it. So Microsoft saw the need to shift from the processor socket to the core base licenses because the machines that were coming out were not based on the processor socket. Now, devices can have one processor socket with about 32 cores in it, with about 128 cores in it. So then if Microsoft is selling its licenses based on the socket, then that means they are going to lose a lot of money. Because if I have a server with about 128 cores, but then one socket, I can buy the one with one socket, maybe for about thirty, uh, about maybe thirty dollars. But then someone who's also having uh, maybe sixteen core, but two sockets, will pay for twice what I'm paying for. But then I'm going to use the license more than he is going to use. So then Microsoft saw the need that oh. Instead of the number of sockets, let's actually move to the number of cores. So if you are using 10 cores, you pay for the license for 10 cores. If you are using 16 cores, you pay for the license for 16 cores. If you are using 32 cores, you pay for the license for 32 cores. And actually, this licensing scheme is what if used from 2016 are to date and this is actually a licensing scheme 
that helps you easily migrate to the cloud especially if you want to um uh you know move a couple of server workloads to the cloud you are actually going to get the the license based on the number of cores in the cloud as well as in on azure i mean so um when you take the server 2016 okay as in the core based kind of licenses um this is how it is structured we have the essential we have the standard and we have the data center so now the web server 2008 has actually been taken out but then you can get web server within any of these three so if you purchase any of these licenses you get the web server but then the the standard is now either the essential or the standard or the data center what addition and as you can see uh licensing module is core based core based and specialty server and then the car requirement is window server car window server car and then no car required so the reason why you see the essential to have no car required is um microsoft actually add a minimum number of cars to the essential so the essential is like a bundle you get the server operating system with a user cars in addition to it so you don't need to buy any extra car but then it is limited to 25 users so you can't use the essential for more than 25 users you have to use um you have to use it for companies with less than 25 users but for the standard and data center edition you have the flexibility to use it for as many people or as many users as you want but then the difference there is a difference between the standard and the data center um with a standard license okay it's quite cheaper compared to the data center most of you who have had an encounter with these things will testify and the reason why the standard is quite cheaper compared to the data center is not because of the number of calls you are buying but because of the number of virtualizations you can run on each so with a standard you can actually run two virtual instances on the standard uh, server uh, license okay and when i say two virtual instances what i mean is if you purchase the server license okay and you want to run uh, hyper v you have the license to run two Hyper-V instances on the standard edition. But for the data center, it's unlimited. You can run 16 virtual instances. You can run, sorry, 32, 64. It all depends on your needs. That is why this is quite expensive. But then it's all part of what? The number of cores that you are purchasing. And let's, 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 dig a little bit deeper into this when you are buying these licenses okay except for the microsoft essentials the standard and the data center you buy it based on the number of cores and when you are purchasing this based on the number of cores uh, the minimum you are supposed to buy is actually what 16 cores so that's the standard you can't purchase anything less than 16 cores for the standard and the data center. For the essential, we sell it one or two or three, just like the way we sell the office or the windows. But for the standard and the data center, you have to buy a minimum of what? 16 cores. And it's actually in the description of the, 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 the name. But then sometimes the description actually you know confuses a bit which i'm going to dig deeper for us to you know understand very clearly so with the 16 cores okay microsoft has a unit price for one core that is for the standard and the data center let me see i think yeah this is it so when you take this is i don't know if it's very clear um 
let me let me read actually what 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 the whole picture shows it's actually win server standard core 2019 single open license program 16 license um i've forgotten what the nl means but then the 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 that is that is the full meaning of what you see there so it's windows server standard core 2019 single open license program 16 license and then core license as in based on the number of cores and then the second one is windows server standard core 2019 single open license program two license then core license okay there is a difference between these two products so when Microsoft actually moved from the socket-based licenses to um, the core-based license, the second product, which is the Windows Server Standard Core 2019 Single Open License Program, two licenses, core license, was what was released first. So those of you who bought those licenses, I think late 2016, um, that was when uh, the 2016 came. I think late 2015, no, 2016 there of early to late 2016. From that time to I think um, 2018, you will get to notice that when anybody quotes the server operating system for you, they quote the second one, which is the Windows Server Standard Core 2019 Single Open License Program, two licenses and then core license this was the product they were quoting but then if you say you want this for one server they do the quantity eight those of you who purchased that license around that time you will notice this or those of you who have worked with you know the licensing or i mean these things you will get to know that people were quoting this product and they will give you quantity eight and we got a lot of you know backlash that I, I said i want one server licenses why are you giving me a uh, quantity eight i didn't say it i said i want one that's when you have to explain to them that oh even though you want one this license is actually what 16 which is the minimum number of what calls you are supposed to buy for licenses so the reason why we were quoting for eight is Microsoft said for server operating system as a Windows server, we are not supposed to buy anything less than 16 cores. OK, so if you are not able to buy anything less than 16 cores and the license is packaged that OK for each license is only what two core license that are in it. So then that means to be able to reach the 16 number of cores, which is the minimum requirement, you are supposed to what? Change the quantity of this from one to eight. So that was the reason why we were quoting for the eight quantity as at that time, which is I think 20, uh, yes, 2016 thereof. So I think 2018. And, you know, we actually filed this kind of complaints to Microsoft to actually revise the license. And that is when they brought the top license, which is the Windows Server Standard 2019 Single Open License Program, 16 licenses. Okay, so for the fresh product, now you can code for one because each license comes with what 16 cores license in it, which is what the minimum requirement compared to the the bottom one which was two licenses and you have to multiply the quantity by eight and now these two products are actually available so if you think you are comfortable using the windows server standard core 2019 single open license two licenses you can go ahead and code for it and you know do the quantity eight for one server or you can use the 16 license one, which is the top one, and you will still get the same price. So for the bottom one, 
until you multiply by eight, you will not get the same price and you will not be you know you will not be compliant in, in terms of the licenses and microsoft will not even sell to you so if you want to use the bottom one you have to make the quantity eight if you want to use the top one you have to you you will make the quantity one but then because we are licensing based on the number of cores there are situations where the the customer will have less than 16 cores and there are situations where the customer will have more than 16 cores. So in that situation, you need to what know the kind of licenses you are supposed to give the customer. And that is, if it's less than 16 cores, the minimum is 16. So you can still quote for any of this, either the top one or the down one. But a situation where the customer is actually having more than 16 cores, then that means you have to what? Now calculate the number of cores they want against the, the, the right way of licensing the product. So if a customer comes to you and say, okay, I have 20 cores. You can't use the first one because it's not up to 20. The license does not cover 20 cores. But then, you can use the bottom one, which is the two license pack, and then multiply it by what? Um, multiply it by what? 10 to get a 20 core licenses, which will cover his or her physical cores in his, uh, his or her server. So you see how now each of them is actually playing their part. The first one was not to was was brought about just not to confuse users and customers. But then there are situations where you can't use the first one. So you have to still come back to the second one and use it. A customer can say, oh, I want my, my server is uh, maybe 30 cores or maybe 50 cores. So the 50 cores and to be able to cover the whole 50 cores and you're supposed to use the second one, which is two. And the quantity has to be what, 25 to cover all the what all the 50 cores. So that is how um, basically the licensing scheme has, has become or has turned into. So you need to know how you want it and you know the number of quantity you want, and then you can decide which of the skills you are supposed to use. Um, we are moving to the SQL licenses. So if 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 anybody has any question, uh, you can ask before I move to the SQL license. Okay, so I assume nobody has a question now. So let's move on to the SQL licenses. Um, when we say the SQL licenses, okay, Microsoft also had the same thing with a server with a SQL. Um, the SQL too was based on the number of sockets as in back then, as in the operating system environment and now they have to switch it to the core based um, with sql okay microsoft actually has three flagship which is the sql um, server with cow okay so for the sql just like the way the server we have the server essentials and that you don't buy a car for it the sql we also have one that comes with a car and then the second one is actually the standard core and the third one is enterprise core so for the server we have windows 
essentials, Windows Server Essential, and then we have the standard core and we have the enterprise core. And then for SQL, we have server with CAL, and then we have the standard core and the enterprise core. Um, with a server with CAL, okay, that one is licensed just like the way we license the Windows Server. So you buy the server, which is maybe one SQL server, and you buy the number of users who will be accessing that database. So if it is 10, you add 10 user accounts. If it is 20, you add 20 user accounts. If it is 30, you add 30 user accounts. And then we have the standard core, which we license based on the number of cores on the server that the SQL is going to sit on. We all know that um, you can run an SQL instance all by itself. It has to sit on a Windows server or a server operating system. So for the server standard and the enterprise standard, you have to license it based on the number of cores on that particular server. And with this, okay, this one too, there is a little bit of trick based on several scenarios I have come into contact with. So one will say that, okay, when do I buy the SQL server with CAL and when do I buy the SQL server standard core and then when do I buy the SQL standard enterprise? So with these three, okay, someone will say, okay, the server with a car is actually cheaper compared to the standard core and the enterprise core. Most of you may not even come into contact with the enterprise core because enterprise core is actually for huge data centers like the whole of maybe Africa or the whole of maybe West Africa. West Africa is, is okay. Let's say maybe the whole of West Africa, a data center, or maybe the whole of Africa, the, the, a data center. That is, uh, those are such scenarios that you can use the enterprise core for. And it is very expensive. I think the last time I checked the price was uh, about $100,000 plus for, for, I think, a core or so, two cores. So most of uh, most of the time, you actually come into contact with the server, the SQL server with CAL and the SQL server standard core. With the SQL server with CAL, you purchase the server and add user calls to it. So just like the server operating system, you buy one SQL server and five user calls will be added to it. And then for the server standard core, you buy it based on the number of cores. The difference between these two is not much. The features are basically the same. But then you decide which one you want to purchase based on the number of users you are dealing with. Because the SQL server standard doesn't deal with number of users, as in it comes with unlimited number of users. But the server with a car, you have to purchase the number of users. So if you are purchasing something like, okay, one server with five user cars or six or seven or eight, you will get to know that, oh, the server, car, the server with car is actually cheaper compared to the, what, the server standard core. But then, if you are dealing with huge numbers like maybe a thousand, five hundred, or maybe uh, two thousand, that is when you get to realize the importance of buying the standard core, because the use the price of the user car will even exceed what the price of the server itself. So most of the time, we look at um, the scenario and then we propose either the SQL server with CAL or the SQL server standard core. Well, one thing also is that this one, which is the, the, the SQL server standard core, actually 
has um, this uh, clause around it. And what is that clause? You see, back in the server 20, uh, when we were talking about the server licensing, okay, the minimum number is what? 16 what? Cores. For SQL, it's different. The minimum number of uh, cores is actually what? Uh, four. So just like the server operating system licensing, if you are buying SQL Server Standard Core, you have to buy a minimum of what? Four. And the license comes in a pack of two. So if you say you want what? For one server, you will see the quantity as two. If you say you want for two servers, you see the quantity as four. If you want for six servers, you see the quantity as what? Three. That is how the standard core works. So someone will say, oh, I want an SQL standard core server for 16 cores. You divide the 16 by 2 and you make the quantity 8. So whilst we are, you know, multiplying the server by 2 for SQL standard core, we are actually dividing it by 2 with a minimum of four, a minimum as in MOQ of four, minimum quantity of four. But for the server, you need a minimum of what, 16. I know some of you probably is a bit confusing right now, but then over time, when you do it, it will actually sink in easily. It's just a simple calculation. So that's basically the, 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 the difference between these two and you propose either of these two based on the situation if you see that the number of cows are quite a lot and then the standard core will serve better or will give the customer a cheaper price then you go in with a server standard core instead of the server with cow but then if you see the opposite then you actually go in with the sql server with cow these two have the same features okay it's only the enterprise core that comes with enterprise level uh, features that is needed on the enterprise base okay so i mean with the two you can just play around it and you will be fine so when you are going on the cloud actually these are some of the things you have to take into consideration because this licensing scheme actually takes you from on-prem to the cloud because you need to use this knowledge if you are going to the cloud as in on Azure okay so you need to understand some of these things when you are moving to the cloud and um, for the cloud they've actually bundled it into the cost so you see something like two core, 16 core, 32 core, and all that with uh, maybe 16 gig storage or 128 storage and all of that. But you need to understand these licenses before you, you actually play around the ones on the cloud. Um, there's actually um, a, a flyer from Microsoft that explains some of these things. So I'm going to display the one from the server and the one for the SQL, and then you can have a look, and then we'll take it from there. Um, I'm almost done, and if you have any questions, you, you can actually ask me, and then we call it a day. So um, just a second. So this is the SQL data sheet, okay? Every information you need about the SQL licenses is on this data sheet. And this is actually from Microsoft. 
and uh, Microsoft actually has a website, okay, that if you want to learn more about licensing and become licensing certified, you can go to that website. It is called getlicensingready.com. So if you go to getlicensingready.com, you'll be able to, you know, go through all the various Microsoft licensing schemes available. And then when you are done, you you write an exams um, and then they will give you a certificate. I think the, the certificate is, is, is valid for, I think, a year. So every every year you need to learn about the new licensing scheme, write the exams, and then and the exams is actually free. You don't have to pay for it like the other um, um, the other um, exams as um, is there. So these are the 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 SQL server. The reason why I didn't talk about the Express is because of the fact that it is free and it is for small apps. Those of you who are developers know this. If you want to run some small database and stuff like that, uh, you can use the Express. And then the developer type to you can use it for free. But the major ones are the standard, the standard core and the enterprise, which I mean, you have to pay before you can use it. But the Express and the developer ones are free. Microsoft gives it out for free. You can download it from anywhere at all you want. Uh, from Microsoft's website, which is microsoft.com slash SQL or so, yeah. And you can use it for free. So all that I was talking about is actually on this slide. These are the, the rules. Um, rules for calculating required licenses. Count the number of cores in the server by the number of core licenses as long as the minimum of four licenses are acquired per processor. No cars are required for internal use or external users. Core licenses, core licenses are acquired in a pack of two. So as I was explaining to you, you buy a minimum of four licenses, but when you check Microsoft licensing list, the license comes in a pack of two. So if you say you want four licenses, the quantity will be two. If you say you want six licenses, the quantity will be three. If you say you want eight licenses, the quantity will be what? Four. So that is how it is. Um, if you don't take time, it might confuse you with the server licenses, which is actually 16, which comes in a pack of eight. So take note of that. And these are the editions, the standard edition and the enterprise edition. And this is the car. The purchase SQL server license and then purchase a client access license. That is the standard with a car. So a user car is assigned to the user and allows the user to use multiple devices and blah, 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 blah. So basically, that is it. And um, all that I explained to you are summarized here. So you can just have a look at it, read it, and you should be fine. And then this is for the server. Um, this is also a small data sheet for the server. As I mentioned to you, um, it's based on the number of cores. And then this is the number of operating system environment. That's the meaning of the OS -E, operating system environment. And for the data center edition, it's unlimited. And then for the standard, you can run two instances. And almost basically everything I mentioned here is I mentioned is summarized here. And you can see the price. The data center edition is 6,155 and the standard edition is um, 883. These are actually probably maybe retail prices. I think by now it, it would have increased or something. And this is actually for 2016. So don't go and harass someone selling Microsoft license to you that uh, I saw it somewhere for $883. Why are you giving it to me for like 7,000 cities or 6,500 cities? So um, you can read more about this and then um, 
you can see where you you your situation or your scenario fits in and if you are running the azure hybrid to as i mentioned you need to take into consideration all of this and you can actually use this website to help you do the calculation you are supposed to do if you are moving to the cloud so basically everything that i said about the server tool is right here this is the calculation i was talking to you about so if you have one processor and the number of physical calls per processor is this okay the quantity that is the two two licenses that the license that comes in a pack of two not the one that comes in a pack of 16. so this is the calculation you can use you get it so microsoft has actually done this um, simple uh, table to help you understand you know the various scenarios and situations where you can you know use this calculation and then you know you get a better understanding of the core licenses so basically everything we've talked about today is right here you can just read about it and you should be fine so um let me switch over to my slide um so that is it and if you need any help with some of these things you can actually hit me up and then we can see where the issue is and i'll be glad to help you it's not a problem i mean you have all my social media handles and you can reach out to me as and when you you need any clarification on this so thank you and if you have any questions you can ask me and we take it from there all right, thank you very much, Nicholas. Guys, uh, do you have any questions for Nicholas? We're welcoming questions at this point. Any questions about licensing? Okay, Chesco. Chesco has a question for Nicholas. Yeah, uh, thank you, Dela. Uh, hi, Nicholas. So if like I'm trying to just play around server, do I need to buy all this with all this uh, $800 and co? Or is there any free version I can just get somewhere and then be playing around it? Maybe like I'm trying to learn the, the, there is a, the Windows server. Nicholas, can you unmute? Oh, okay, sorry. Um, with the Windows Server, okay. Um, Microsoft is Microsoft's focus is actually the bigger brand. Okay, Microsoft does not really um, find individuals attractive in terms of business okay their target is actually the bigger brand so if 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 you notice most of microsoft products are free for students or free for individuals because um, they know that you need to get on hands experience with a product before you can take it to the working world so if you want to play around any of these products is most of them are basically free if it's not even free you get a 90 days trial that you can use but now i think most of the products are actually free especially if 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 you're a student azure you get free um azure credit um with with the products we just talked about you can actually use it for 90 days and then discard it and you know use it use a different one for another 90 days but then you actually not need all the services in it because you are just running a test environment or things like that so with that you can just you know 
use it for the 90 days and throw it away because you don't have or you are not running a data center that um, you need to keep whatever you are testing for so you don't need to purchase the the 800 and something dollars it's actually for companies i think people with uh, bigger pockets who use this for business so um you don't need your answer the answer is you don't need to purchase um these things for for the 800 dollars unless probably you are doing it for a company which i mean they are also using it to make money then you have to buy this license and use for them okay okay thank you very much all right you're welcome Okay, thank you, Nicholas, on that. Um, any other questions? Ernest, do you have any question? Uh, not actually, but I'm cool, and I would like to thank uh, uh, Nicholas for that awesome presentation on Windows Server Lines. Uh, thank, thank you, Nicholas. And uh, I'm quite familiar with the Server Lines. So at this time, I don't have questions. All right. OK, Nicholas, thank you very much for having time for us for thank this you. session. Um, or share your social media handles on our platform so that anyone who has further questions later can reach out to you. That's fine. All right. Okay, all in audience, we thank you very much for joining us for this session. Um, hopefully, we'll be meeting again in our next session next month. <clears throat> And there's any closing remarks? Uh, yes, sir. I would like to, I mean, thank our speakers, uh, Adnan and Nicholas again, and uh, also a special thank you to our attendees who joined the event from their various places. Uh, especially, we had people even joining from Dubai and other places. Uh, a special thank you to them. We we'll be hosting our next event on microsoft 365 and that is going to be a huge one uh, it will be uh, next last saturday of next month so kindly stay tuned we will keep you posted and i mean enjoy your weekend all right Della. so uh, without any further comment, we can call it a day. Okay, okay Ennis, thank you. All right. All right, so thanks. Thank you, guys. Thank you.